Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Mass. We have quite a marathon in front of us. This will be the longest Fast Effect ever. Max is leading out with Exploration into Fields of the Dead. Jeremiah playing Cloud Post, leading out with Once Upon a Time, a card that is fairly new. Uh, it's actually a great addition to Cloud Post. Jeremiah has been playing this uh, since way back when Sensei's Dividing Top was in the format. I played it quite a bit back then as well. was very excited to see this new list. And we'll see what's in store. There's a, a lot of spice to it. A matchup that both decks really rely on their mana base. Uh, on the one hand, you've got lands, of course, uh, playing an absolute ton of lands, looking to assemble the Merit Lage combo with Thespian Stage, also grinding your opponent out, attacking their mana base with Wasteland and Rashadden Port, and, of course, recurring everything with Life from the Lone, making it very resilient and... Uh, highly disruptive cloud post on the other side is going to look to build a mana base in spite uh, or in the face of these wastelands and Rashadden ports from the other side right off the bat with this exploration this thespian stage means uh, that max could actually have a merit lage on any turn moving forward of course one thing to consider jeremiah does have caracas and a heck of a lot of access to it he has crop rotation Elvish Reclaimer, Primeval Titan, Green Sun Zenith for any of those, and uh, very, very possible Golos. I mean, there are tons of ways for Jeremiah to get a Caracas into play. Uh, Cloud Post comes in for him, and he's going to look to get multiples of those Locusts. For those unfamiliar, Cloud Post taps for one mana for each Locust in play, and it has a subtype Locust. Uh, we've got a Wasteland, which is one of the more powerful tools versus the deck, but Jeremiah has a Crop Rotation to counter it. A very devastating play and actually going to grab a uh, Bajooka Bog. So Wasteland did a little bit of work there. Um, and Life from Low being played there. Good read from Jeremiah. Preventing the recursion with Wasteland. So Life from Low now going to be able to dredge and uh, hopefully hit another Wasteland. Uh, we've got a Reclamation Sage coming down on curve, taking out this Exploration. And that is going to make this Life from the Loam significantly worse. Being able to play two lands a turn, absolutely incredible when you're getting three lands back from your graveyard each turn, which is where this will eventually go if this Life from the Loam is left unchecked. He uses it to return a uh, Forest and uh, to his hand and play a Tabernacle. And Jeremiah thinking about whether it's even worth it to keep the mana invested in this beater he decides against it lets it go plays another glimmer post gaining some life grove of the burn willows could actually be a win condition in this matchup recurring punishing fires it could get that grindy Max likely just going to be trying to contain Jeremiah. With just a couple of cloud posts, his mana base not so threatening, but once you get to three or four locusts, he can actually hard cast Eldrazi like Emrakul and Ulamog. Gets out of hand so quickly. He does have quite a few things that can actually help Make extra land drops, of course. Primeval Titan, incredibly dangerous. That card basically just wins the game. Euro is a much more castable threat early on. And then uh, Golos, so those all add additional land drops. Uh, never mind uh, the utility of crop rotation to go get whatever lands you want. And just like that, Jeremiah has... A cloud post, and that is going to tap for three mana. That's Mishra's uh, workshop territory. Uh, Max does have a Rashad in port, though, so that is likely going to be tied up for the foreseeable future as this cloud post will just keep getting tapped down. Fetching off of Misty Rainforest, grabbing another tropical island. And there is Golos. 
a whole bunch of options for this. He can grab another cloud post, and he, he does uh, other considerations. Uh, he's got the Rainbow Land. I forget the name of it off the top of my head. It has Hexproof. It's a uh, basically strictly better version of uh, Crystal Quarry from way back in the day, the uh, Odyssey Land that you could pay five and tap it to get Wooburg. Uh, now that is the same thing, except the land has Hexproof, uh, making it an actual plan with Golos. You can just filter five colorless into that land and spin the wheel see what you get and there are some spicy things that can come off the top in this deck as we've said primeval titan ulamog emrakul so many dangerous game ending cards Not sure exactly what that was about. It looks like life from the loam getting dredged back. The zombie being let go. Not sure if Max actually wanted to be paying a mana to keep that guy around or not. Another zombie enters the battlefield. And he can make quite a few of them. Fetch lands are going to add up quite a bit. Paying for Golos. Rashad and Port tapping down a cloud post. And he swings. And a green sun zenith. And this, this could be it. I'm imagining we're going to see prime time here. Yep, prime time. X equals six. And that's going to fetch up a couple of more lands. Each of these cloud posts is going to tap for a six if he goes that route. Uh, he's actually... Oh, he's going to play it a little safer, perhaps. He might uh, copy Bajuka Bog. Yeah, he's just playing super safe here, grabbing Glimmer Post and a copy of Bajuka Bog, exiling the graveyard. Next turn, this Primeval Titan will be able to swing and uh, be lethal anyways, as it will get additional Cloud Post or even Eye of Ugin to tutor up any of those Eldrazi. Max looking to unlock himself here uh, from this tabernacle situation. Uh, he actually lets the zombie go and just scoops it up. So interesting play there. Yeah, he actually cap, uh, copied his tabernacle with the uh, with Thespian stage. The legend rule kicks in, gets rid of the original, and then later he can hop off of the Thespian stage. Uh, Stop it from being a tabernacle by copy something else. Not a play that you typically see with the deck, but Thespian Stage does have a role in most of the super spicy plays that the deck has. Is there going to be a bunch of shuffling? This will be the longest fast effect ever, so we're actually going to uh, skip some of the shuffling to try and keep the run time, run time down. All right, jumping back in here, game number two, Max leading out with a Grove of the Burn Willows, Jeremiah again with Once Upon a Time. Such a excellent addition. Definitely worth taking a look at if you're going to be dusting off older archetypes that haven't been played in a while. Once Upon a Time may absolutely fit in. It's one of the first things I tested out in Cephalid Breakfast. Ultimately didn't make the cut there, but man, does it shine in Cloud Post. Uh, largely because you're so happy to be hitting both your mana base or your business. Either one of them is, is really quite good most of the time. Getting extra cloud posts is uh, not really a problem. This Vesuva actually copying Grove of the Burn Willow is highly unusual. Uh, it does give green mana uh, for crop rotation and a host of other spells in the deck. It's actually going to be tapped down off of Rashad and Port, and another Cloud Post enters here. And at some point, Max is going to have to decide exactly which half of the mana base he wants to go after. Cloud Post left unchecked are going to start casting some pretty nasty threats. Even next turn, a Cloud Post or Glimmer Post will allow Jeremiah to just hard cast a Golos. even being ported. And 
And Max uh, actually going to allow a full turn for Jeremiah here. He's going to drop a tireless tracker and a wasteland, take out one of these cloud posts and pass the turn. That wasteland key to that play would have been uh, pretty scary to do otherwise. But actually, Euro's going to undo the damage. Going to draw a card, gain some life, and get an extra land drop in. And that's going to be an Elvish Reclaimer as well. So very nice bounce back there for Jeremiah. Wasteland, one of the better cards versus the deck. Uh, but as we see, Euro really complicates that situation. And now that Elvish Reclaimer's on board, uh, he's actually going to really hamper the utility of Wasteland as he can respond to a Wasteland by uh, sacrificing, it, uh, sacrificing the target and going to get a replacement. So really complicates the use of Wasteland in the deck. Often uh, Jeremiah is going to need to be tapped out for Wasteland to have its full effect, and he can potentially play around that uh, fairly well. He has to do a lot of stuff at sorcery speed, but he does have a bunch of instants brainstorm once upon a time. And if he can keep a little bit of mana open, that's really going to do a lot to protect his mana base. Like a reverse Sylvan Safekeeper. Just keep those lands on board. Max here, no acceleration. Turning into an awkward game here, looking to grind things out. Tireless Tracker, very good at that. And he's going to be tapping... So actually just sacking a clue here. I'm surprised he's using Rashad and Port. I wonder what he's going to use the rest of this mana for. It's going to be something right now to make this make a lot of sense. And a crop rotation. And another crop rotation. So look at that. Actually, while the shields are down, while this Elvish Reclaimer not able to do its thing. He's actually going to go ahead and grab a pair of Wastelands and try and really bottleneck Jeremiah. He's taking out the Grove and the Tropical Island, leaving Jeremiah with just a blue mana and a cloud post. Double crop rotation against most decks resolving usually means you've won the game. You can get Thespian Stage in Dark Depths, make a 20-20, and move on to the next one. But here actually needing to use it defensively, largely because of just how good Elvish Reclaimer is. We'll see how this plays out. A very interesting line. The other possibility uh, was like a card like uh, Blast Zone could potentially just clear the Elvish Reclaimer. Though Euro was also a consideration. He actually would have been able to cast Euro and uh, that 6-6 six, six would have caused serious problems. So this may end up being the best line for Max. Will it be enough? Now with three mana, he can either sack a clue stone or tap a land. Uh, given that he made his land drop this turn, I believe we're going to be seeing Rashad and Port used on Jeremiah's turn. Let's see what he does. I think if you can potentially draw a land, it may be worth uh, YOLOing and cracking and then being able to get uh, have your cake and eat it too. Tap down a land. Once you draw one off the top, lands does have a ton of lands in it, so Better than 50-50, you're going to be drawing a land. And continuing to make your land drops super important in the deck. He does not want to get left behind here. The mana base is likely to dictate this matchup. So many moving pieces. Cloud Post. Really an exciting list. Actually went out and built it after seeing... Jeremiah's work on this. As I said, I played this uh, quite a bit back in the day. Ooh, and Force of Vigor actually being used on those two clue stones. Interesting line there, potentially denying Max a couple of card draws. 
Though if he has more lands, I don't really know how much that'll do. We'll see. I mean, there may be better targets for it later. And as long as he's making land drops, it's really not going to deny him the ability to draw cards and grow the tireless tracker. It's not like he's got a ton of extra mana. Or he's just going to be, you know, clearing out a bunch of them each turn. Only one mana up for Jeremiah, so no Elvish Reclaimer shenanigans available yet. Two mana. Oh, and Sylvan Library. And a Wasteland. And whew, just like that, two... I mean, a clue is back on board in Sylvan Library. An absolute bomb. Sylvan's going to give Max a ton of extra looks each turn. Shuffles are going to be at a premium. Though his life total now very much uh, becoming a, a useful tool. To create additional card advantage, and there's so many clues. This tireless tracker can get quite large. And may in fact want to. I mean, it's, it may be correct to get this tireless tracker turning sideways each turn. Cloud Post can be a little diff Oh, and another enchantment. It's really making that... Uh, force of vigor hurt a little bit when your opponent plays two super high quality targets I mean you can only make the best plays that you can with the information you have but that is certainly punished he's got four clue stones as well Max can actually Wasteland and port Jeremiah. And uh, now may be the time to Wasteland him while that Reclaimer is tapped, or um, unavailable, I should say. His mana base. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just wrong there, looking at this the wrong way. He has two mana open, so he'll need to, uh, if he wants, uh, he'll need to Rashad and port and then Wasteland. And once upon a time, being fired off in response to this wasteland, we'll be able to clear one of these cloud posts. Uh, but this is all during Max's turn. So Jeremiah will get a turn without his mana base being contested. Does he have anything to do with it? He could potentially convert this into three cloud posts if he wanted but uh, he can just do that on Max's turn anyways so no rush a single Rashad and Port on Max's side of the board if Jeremiah has green mana this in hand this could actually get pretty ugly he could potentially turn both of these non-cloud posts into cloud posts and then untap, allow a cloud post to be tapped, and still have six mana before his land drop, meaning greens on Zenith could go get prime time, and things could get completely out of hand right on the spot. That's the type of thing Max has to be concerned with here, and we'll see what he does to address that with this gamble. Field of the Dead goes to the graveyard. Not really a factor yet. There's four different land types. Life from Alone. Going to be cast. Jeremiah has the option of going to get a Bajuka Bog, I believe. And he is going to let it resolve. Mm. 
No, he'll go get the bajuka bug. So life from alone, no legal targets on resolution is countered. Goes to the graveyard either way. And with that exploration and play, Life from Alone would have been absolutely devastating. Bajukabog can be tempting to keep around as you can actually go get Vesuva and copy your Bajukabog. But Jeremiah's got to let it go, grabbing a cloud post. And he can use his other Reclaimer now if he wants. Oh, very macabre. So I guess that was during the upkeep. And he drew from Fairy Macarb. Another Rashad and Port. Max. Getting more and more clues here. Crop rotation. Now, if he does grab a wasteland, it turns into a little bit of a uh, cat and mouse situation. Oh, he's going to grab Blast Zone. There you go. That is... Super spicy. If he did grab a Wasteland, uh, then Elvish Reclaimer would essentially be held off as when you go to activate, uh, you can take out one of the other lands. Anytime that he has two mana available, he can respond. Blast Zone comes in and is going to go ahead and clear both of these Reclaimers. We'll see if Jeremiah has a response. Does he want to cash in this Tropical Island, perhaps? No, he's going to keep that around. Maybe his only blue or green source. Cloud Post tap down. Once upon a time. Grabbing a Misty Rainforest, which he plays, and sacrifices and is able to Green Sun Zenith for a, another Elvish Reclaimer. So clears it, but it comes right back. I think Euro was last game, but he's starting uh, starting to be a threat here. Uh, Euro is quite a bit of inevitability packaged into such a small card and only f four mana to escape. He can really just keep being thrown out there. Even if Max some has, somehow has a way of clearing him, he'll just come right back and more than likely... Uh, he would wrap things up, especially uh, we see Jeremiah's life total over 20. Very relevant when you're trying to just one-shot somebody. On the other side of this, we've got the uh, tireless tracker, which, man, if that guy was turning sideways, would feel a, a whole lot better. Chipping away at Jeremiah's life total.
would uh, really change the dynamic here. It feels like he's got all day to try and play through everything. Though to be fair, I'd imagine Max probably hasn't played this matchup. I mean, who has? Cloudpost's not really a major player at all. And, I mean, Lands is usually the grindier deck. And right now, Cloudpost is actually uh, feeling uh, a little bit more... Um, Scrappy? I mean, it's not like he's a head on board, uh, but he's just hanging in there and just always one step away from potentially blowing this game wide open in a way that Max can't really recover from. A life from the loam now. Going to grab Blast Zone and a Grove of the Burn Willows. Grove is the land drop for turn. And end of turn, Elvish Reclaimer. Gonna grab a Vesuva, copying Cloud Post, and he is gonna be untapping with 10 mana. Even with these Rashadden ports, Jeremiah getting dangerously close. Oh, and there's Euro. Green Sun Zenith, the colorless requirement. Very welcome. You have plenty of colorless mana with this deck. can be a little bit tougher to get the blue and green that you need. Especially in the face of Rashad and Port. Uh, no extra land drop. Oh, that feels bad. That feels unfortunate. Uh, so an extra card drawn off of Euro. Uh, but no extra land drop. An extra land drop would have put Max in a very awkward spot, as then he'd have to be concerned about the escaping of Euro compared to uh, the colorless mana. I mean, you you allow those lands to be tapping for three, four, five mana each. Uh, that is very dangerous with Eldrazi floating around in the deck. On the other side, if Jeremiah gets to the four colored required for Euro, he's just going to show up and start smashing face making extra land drops, drawing cards. And that'll cause Max to need to uh, pivot a little bit in his plan and start sacking these clues, getting the tireless tracker to be big enough to actually stand in the way of the 6-6 six, six Titan. Max only six lands in play, really... Just needs a whole lot more if he's going to try and restrain this mana base. And that may just be ice skating uphill. It's entirely possible that Max needs to actually beat this Cloud Post deck and not try and uh, just strangle it into submission. Going after this mana base proving to be a difficult task. Now, right now, the shields are down with the Elvish Reclaimer, but a crop rotation could potentially blow things wide open. Max has to be aware of that. He's already felt that sting once. We are coming up on the half hour mark here. This is a crazy long fast effect. This is the final, so it's untimed. And we are in game two. I have no idea if this goes to game three or not. As this was going on, I was taking care of the rest of the top eight, handing out prizes, uh, mostly singles from our outstanding selection. And I was very surprised to see the total runtime. Uh, Mana Bond now. Super powerful card in the deck. A Ghost Quarters being the land drop for turn. And now Mana Bond discarding the hand, everything entering. A Tireless Tracker discarded, but another Blast Zone ready to roll. 
There's some clue triggers, which actually gives him priority during the end step. He can blow up the blast zone now. Ghost Quarters takes out one of the cloud posts. Oh, and he's out of basics. That's good news. Good news for Max if he can keep this wasteland situation going. And I think now's the time to blow up this blast zone. No, he's gonna let him. He's gonna let him have it. Instead, opting to go after. The mana base that that may actually be correct. Very complicated so many interactions here. This Elvish Reclaimer a real thorn in Max's side. There's a Dark Depths. And Life from the Loam. What is this Fairy Macabre responding to? So Life from Loam returning one target, Fairy Macabre taking out the other two. This Elvish Reclaimer just ready to make a play. A waterlogged grove being sacked. Dredge back life from the loam. Life from the loam. Getting just the waterlogged grove. Ooh, that's the only lands in there. That's rough. With a mana bond on board, you'd want to be returning like three lands per turn. A Field of the Dead enters, getting a 2-2 zombie. And another clue and a Trick Bind on Mana Bond during the end step. Untap. Tap down one of those lands. Tap and down the other, and a green sun zenith. Green sun zenith into the blast zone? This leaves me befuddled. I don't understand that. We'll see what I'm missing or what Jeremiah is missing real soon. There's a blast zone on board and he just used a green sun zenith to get an additional elvish reclaimer. Feels like Max is just going to clear these guys out of the way. And tap down his mana base. He can actually start swinging now. And 
and I'm going to get some damage in. And then soon enough, Mac's going to be able to start sacrificing clue stones to get additional damage on board. Max has used his life as a resource so far. You see his life total down to two. He's been drawing extra cards off of the Sylvan Library. And now he's going to be able to use those extra lands to get even more cards thanks to the pile of clues that he has on board. And it is very comforting to play against a deck that doesn't have access to red or any type of direct damage. There's no, no situation here where Jeremiah is going to be able to kind of reach out for the extra two damage. He's going to have to make his game plan come together. And for Jeremiah's deck, dealing infinite damage, pretty similar to dealing two damage. Very few exceptions to that. Primeval Titan, I suppose. Having Trample can potentially get in there for a couple of points on occasion, but for the most part, if you're swinging with prime time, you're just going to win anyways. A bunch more damage coming in here. And a crop rotation during the end step. Grabbing a glimmer post, gaining three life. Probably too little too late. And there's a Ulamog on the top, and we're going to game number three here in the finals of the ELD Legacy Open. By far the longest fast effect ever. We are clocked in at 37 minutes here so far. This is running at double speed, and we are editing out the shuffling. All right, we had a few minutes of shuffling there trimmed out for you. Jeremiah on the play leading out. For the third time with Once Upon a Time, the free cantrip. Like a free impulse really digs super deep and finds you either the mana or the threat that you need. Elvish Reclaimer. We got a Taiga for Max. Mox Diamond Punishing Fire would be amazing. Let's see what he's got. Exploration into a Thespian Stage. Solid start here. Potential turn 2 win. Or turn 2 2020. Not exactly a win versus this deck as uh, he can absolutely tutor up a Caracas given enough time. Though the Elvish Reclaimer is going to put it into the battlefield tapped, so not quite as potent as a crop rotation. Now with this one green open, that does put Max to the test. Even if he has the option of making the 2020, it may be a bit too dicey for him to lose half of his mana base. I think you've got to go for it if you've got a life from the loam in hand. Rebuilding so easy with the two-mana sorcery. What do we got, Max? He's got another Thespian stage. And he's got the Dark Depths, so there you go. A lot of hesitation on that. Uh, but he's got the 2020, and uh, this can be an end-step play. We can see an end step play of a 2020. This Elvish Reclaimer not going to be able to break it up. It's going to be, yeah, at this point, is crop rotation or no? Interesting. And he's he's crop rotating away. Grabbing a blast zone. What am I 
I'm missing. He's going to take out the Elvish Reclaimer and the Candelabra. I guess he's also playing around Trickbind, which he's seen. Uh, Trickbind doesn't really matter. If he tries to Trickbind... So I'm going to talk about this for a little bit because I'm just confused. If he tries to trick bind the Thespian Sage Dark Depths combo, there's two different places where he can do it. He can try and counter the Thespian Sage activation, which is simply delays it, uh, or he can allow the Thespian Sage to become a Dark Depths, allow the Legend Rule to resolve, and then trick bind uh, the uh, ability. But it's a state trigger, so it'll just trigger again doesn't actually stop it so I am not sure let me know in the comments if you can see uh, the reason to not go for that 2020 during the end step I mean maybe it's because you can grab Caracas and then also go grab a glimmer post go to one and then Caracas bouncing the merit lage leaving you at one life and then punishing fire can kill you um yeah i don't know we'll see how this plays out very interesting hopefully uh, max gets a chance to review his play as well i'd love to hear his thoughts on it gaining some more life now candelabra untapping all of these lands And a Golos. Golos comes in, grabs a Cloud Post, and just like that, Jeremiah has 11 mana. Without the Candelabra, Candelabra is going to add another, uh, what is that, three each? So he's got 16 mana. This could be very, very bad for Max. His draw was really... A really fast draw. It was a turn to 2020. And he's played it very conservatively, very controlling draw. I don't know that it's going to be able to get the job done. Crop rotation in response to this wasteland. And it's almost like take your pick. He grabs a Caracas. And crop rotating for another wasteland. Knocking back on these cloud posts. Just like that, Jeremiah has four mana to work with. Golos is legendary, though. So this could actually be kind of another way for Cloudpost to grind things out. But Jukabog comes in, clears the graveyard... And we may see Golos return during the end step and replayed. No. Nope. This match has gone so long that we have lost the timer. The life totals have died. We are over 90 minutes of gameplay. 
Uh, and that's with cutting out the shuffling and all of the pregame hand selection. Crop rotation. Getting a cloud post. Bouncing. And replaying Golos. And it's like a cascading catacombs or something like that. Let me know in the comments. I'm actually not sure what the name of that card is. But it uh, taps, it filters for Wooberg and has hexproof. It's a upgrade from the old Crystal Quarry and just goes perfectly with Golos. And Jeremiah can start spinning the wheel. He sends... You can actually bounce Golos, replay it, get extra cloud posts. Whole bunch of options here with the Candelabra. List running three of them, which I was happy with. I've got uh, quite a few of those from back in the day. Of course, always buying and selling all magic cards, but I had a playset from previous builds, uh, bought a playset or two, so it was uh, pretty cool to see those actually being useful again. They're always sweet in uh, Commander and in some fringe decks here and there, but I think this deck has some real potential. Uh, I think it's, I mean, beyond potential, I think it's just like actually good. Uh, I don't know if this is the optimal build or not. The trick binds are very cute. Uh, they force games of magic, though, I'll tell you that. Uh, Jeremiah thinking through his line here. Yeah, I think he can activate Golos twice if that's what he's trying to do. That's going to be able to tap for four. And Candelabra makes uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, I think that's that's correct. I think he's going to be able to activate twice. Uh, just that's what it looks like to me. You need five plus the cataracts. Which would be essentially 12. You get two on taps of the uh, of the filter land. So here we go. Let's see what comes out of this. Elvish Reclaimer. Why is there three? And there's a concession there. So uh, Max scooping it up in response there. I'm not sure why there were three cards revealed. Um, but either way, uh, the inevitability taking over. Max had a super fast hand there uh, in game number three and was not able to convert it into a control route. Uh, congratulations to both players in our entire top eight and uh, to you, if you made it to the end of this video, my goodness, that's uh, almost 100 minutes of actual gameplay. Uh, that is an absolute marathon, and uh, both of those decks are capable of it, and that's it, man. Thanks for watching. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.